today's video is about targeting multiple countries for your Google Ads. How many campaigns should you create if you are targeting the global market? Would you be managing nearly 200 campaigns? Is it doable? Does it make sense? Hi, I'm Clarice Lind, the ROI doctor who helps Shopify stores to double store sales by running profitable Google Shopping ads. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Check out one of my free resources, the Google Ads Pulse Check, a diagnostics checklist with nine indicators to help you determine if you're driving the right shoppers to your store with Google Ads. Link in the description and pinned comment. I received an interesting question in one of my last videos where I talk about targeting multiple countries for Google Ads and my recommendation of ideally running one campaign for each country to improve targeting and improve conversions. If you're interested in the video, link in the top right-hand corner of the screen. So, the question from the viewer after watching my video goes like this. You've mentioned not targeting more than one country and I understand that for larger countries and countries that are more interested in a product, that does not scale very well when you're targeting the world. It will seem at some point you need to target more than one country or you will have a minimum of 195 campaigns, probably a lot more. For us, we have 50% from UK, 20% from United States, 2% from Ireland, and then everything below 1% after that. What do you do in that case? It's a great question. Before I answer the question, I want to introduce to you the concept of the Pareto Principle, more commonly known as the 80-20 rule. <laughs> The story goes like this. In 1896, Italian sociologist and economist Fiofredo Pareto made a discovery in his pea garden. He was counting the peas in each pea pot and he noted that 80% of the peas came from 20% of the pots. Subsequently, he also discovered 80% of the land in the kingdom of Italy was owned by 20% of the population. And that's how the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule came about. This principle shows up in many places in our world today. For example, in your closet. You probably wear 20% of your clothes 80% of the time. I'm guilty of that. On social media, maybe 20% of your friends generate 80% of the likes and comments on your posts. <music> Applying the Pareto principle is very valuable. This is because our time and resources are limited. In any given situation, there are many possible actions we can take. What we try to do is to estimate the value delivered by each action and then select a number of the most effective actions that deliver a total value reasonably close to the maximal possible one. The goal of the Pareto principle is to focus on the biggest win possible with the least possible effort. In other words, to identify and prioritize the least number of most important changes that are needed to get the biggest results. Make sense so far? All right, as promised, let's go back to the excellent question about targeting multiple countries and how the Pareto principle applies in this scenario. <music> The question mentioned managing nearly 200 campaigns for a global market. And let's be honest, that's not exactly ideal. So how can we tackle this challenge? This is where we put the 80-20 rule in action, activating the power of prioritization. How can we use a small portion of effort to yield a large majority of the results? Let's translate this to the Google Ads targeting strategy. And the question, it was mentioned that the sales distribution with 50% coming from the UK, 20% from the United States, 2% from Ireland and 1% coming from the rest of the world. It's obvious that the UK is the golden goose, the market driving half the sales. Applying the 80-20 rule means to focus your initial optimization efforts on this high impact market. The UK is the golden goose, but there's more to milking it than just targeting the entire country. Let's go beyond location targeting and explore advanced segmentation strategies. For example, Product segmentation, identify the products with the best profit margins and work out if there's potential to break them out into separate ad groups or set up a different campaign. For example, if you're selling engagement bands and wedding bands, they could be two separate ad groups instead of lumping them into one. This will improve your targeting and allow you to set targeted bids based on profitability and competition for each category. While product segmentation is a powerful approach, consider these additional advanced segmentation strategies to further refine your targeting within the UK market. For example, city targeting targets specific cities where the majority of your ideal customers will reside. This allows you to tailor your campaigns and potentially adjust bids based on regional competition. Because there was no mention of specific product types or industry in the question, so what I can recommend is this. The specific segmentation strategy you choose will depend on your unique data and business goals. Analyzing factors like product type, customer demographics, and regional variations can help you determine the most effective approach. There is also the option of running more targeted ad campaigns with various ad formats. Let's explore how to use different ad formats based on the shopping journey stages. <music> Using the example of a store selling engagement and wedding bands, 
the awareness stage, introducing shoppers to the brand. Consider utilizing YouTube video ads featuring heartwarming poser stories or couples showcasing their wedding bands. This format excels at sparking interest and generating initial brand awareness. The consideration stage, guiding users to virtually try on rings or customize their preferences. Utilize responsive display ads with detailed descriptions or text ads with keywords related to specific styles. You can also explore interactive landing pages, allow users to virtually try on rings or customize their preferences. This format allows for deeper engagement and exploration of the product options. The last stage, which is attracting shoppers who are most ready to buy. Utilizing shopping ads with high quality product images, clear pricing information. This format is optimized for driving immediate purchases. Google has recently shared their shopper survey findings. Most of the time, shoppers take at least six actions or more to buy from a brand or product they've never heard before. So spreading word about your brand to shoppers who are not ready to buy yet would be a great start to expand your brand's reach to a wider audience. By applying the Pareto principle and this segmentation strategies, you can optimize your Google Ads campaigns to reach the audience with the most relevant message at the right time. This will ultimately lead to more conversions and a maximized return on your investment. Now that we've explored how to maximize opportunities in the UK market, what's next? Let's go for the second largest market. Analyze the US market, including Ireland, if there is significant market potential, using the same principles applied to the top market. Here are some additional factors to consider as part of the analysis. Markets with high repeat business potential. Focus on markets with a higher likelihood of repeat customers. Consider customer lifetime value, CLTV. Quick definition for those who are new to the term customer lifetime value. Imagine customer lifetime value as the total amount of money a customer spends with your business over their entire relationship with you. It's not just about the first sale you make to them, but the sum of all their purchases over time. Think of it like this. If someone buys a small item from your store once, their lifetime value might be low. But if another customer becomes a regular who buys frequently and spends more each time, their lifetime value will be much higher. By understanding customer lifetime value, you can focus your marketing efforts on attracting and retaining customers with the potential to bring more value to the business in the long run. Is there any difference in shipping costs that would undermine the profit margin significantly? Significant differences in shipping costs can also impact your profit margins. Consider this when allocating your ad budget. Once you've addressed the bigger markets and there's additional time and resources, here are a few options into how to address targeting this remaining 1%. Instead of trading over 200 campaigns, here are a few solutions to consider. Option 1. Can you efficiently target countries with similar languages or cultural preferences using a single campaign? This can be a good option for smaller markets with a combined potential. Option 2. Are there specific products or product groups with higher profit margins that sell better in that 1%? Perhaps that can be combined to one single campaign too. Option 3. Market size. Is the market big enough to justify individual campaigns? How much time does it take to manage the campaign versus the returns? Is it worth it? Option 4. Monitor performance. Keep an eye on the performance of smaller markets. If one starts exceeding expectations, consider a dedicated campaign for that region in the future. Remember, balance is key. By continuously monitoring performance and re-evaluating strategies, you can optimize your campaigns to reach the right audience in each market, maximize your return on investment. <music> A quick summary of my answer. The Pareto Principle is a powerful tool. We can use it to identify the 20% of effort that delivers 80% of the results. In some cases, it's not literally an exact 80-20 split. In a more applicable manner, the goal is to achieve the most results with the least possible effort. Here, it means focusing on optimizing campaigns for the top markets for the UK and the US first to maximize returns without getting overwhelmed. Once those are dialed in, we can explore targeting Ireland and the remaining markets. What are your experiences with targeting multiple countries? Do you use the 80-20 rule? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you have any other questions about targeting multiple countries, also let me know in the comments below. If you're in the process of scaling up your campaigns, do watch my other video, How to Scale Up Your Campaigns in a Profitable Manner. It dives deep into effective strategies and helps you to consider multiple angles that need to be planned ahead before you even start scaling. Link in the top right-hand corner of the screen. For more tips to achieve long-term success in Google Shopping Ads, I have a video that explores strategies to ensure your campaigns are set for long-term wins. Link in the top right-hand corner of the screen. If you found all of this too complicated and you want to work with a professional to make sure your ads are ranking high and getting the right clicks to get the sales, do get in touch. I specialize in helping Shopify stores struggling with running profitable campaigns. 
I help them to get from inconsistent ad performance to predictable, profitable campaigns. If that sounds like it's for you, look for my contact details in the description and pinned comment. If you're unsure whether your shopping campaigns are on the right track, my free downloadable resource, Google Ads Pulse Check, outlines the top 9 behavioral indicators to identify purchase-ready shoppers. Grab your copy by clicking the link in the description and pinned comment below. If you've enjoyed this video and found it valuable, tap on the thumbs up and let YouTube know it helps with the algorithm and I'll really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos on how to double store revenue with profitable Google Ads. I'm Clarice Lin, the RI Doctor, signing off. Stay profitable.